A year ago, I came before you in the flesh to tell you something you wanted to hear. That the enemies of gaming were wrong, that we were not responsible for all the evils they blamed on us, and that it was a fight we could win. Well, here I am again. And once again, I've got something to tell you. But this time, it's something I know you don't want to hear. It's something I don't like saying, but it's something that needs to be said, and I've never been shy about saying what was on my mind before. It's certainly not something I like saying. I fully expect that this video will divide people, piss people off, and will very likely lose me more than a few fans. But I've never been shy about saying what was on my mind before, and it would be wrong to start now. As gamers, we're used to being thought of as the problem, and when not us, the games we play. And as such, we're used to being defensive about it. We're used to telling our critics off, arguing the point, pleading our case. And we're used to being right, because usually we are. But not always. What do we do then? What do we do when the critics are right? What do we do when they have a point? What do we do when we are the problem? And make no mistake, we are the problem a lot more than we like to admit. Does the media stereotype gamers? Yes. But it takes two to make that sort of thing work. Stereotypes have to be based on something. If we didn't conform to them, they wouldn't stick. The common stereotype of gamers is that we're schlubby, socially inept, have bad manners, and an even worse grasp of reality versus fantasy. How do we counter this? How do we show people that this isn't the case? Uh, well, we could, uh, stop doing all that stuff, for one thing. It's time to face some hard truth of our own, guys. Just because gamers aren't the pathetic lifeforms the media portrays us as, doesn't mean we can't stand to get better. We need to improve. We need to evolve. So let's build a better gamer. Now, some of this is going to be just practical advice, some of it's going to be behavioral, and a lot of it is going to be me using my platform to bitch about subsets of gamer culture that piss me off. I'm breaking this into three segments, lifestyle, culture, and behavior. Not all of this will apply to all gamers, but I'm asking that we all keep an open mind. So now, without wasting any more time... Okay, this one is actually going to be a lot shorter than I originally planned, because while I was putting things together, Brian Schmoyer's video, The Only Thing I Know, came out and said a lot of what needed to be said better than I could have. So my first piece of advice here is to go and watch that if you haven't already. And let me give Brian a big personal shout-out for it. Do I agree with everything he had to say? Not quite. But even still, that took some serious balls to put out there in this medium, so good on you, sir. The fact is, guys, the problem with the gaming lifestyle is that it's not a lifestyle. It's a hobby. If you're experiencing gaming on a level that constitutes a lifestyle and you're not, say, getting paid to do it, you're doing it wrong. As we've talked about before, video games are toys. All of them. And what is a toy for? To amuse yourself, preferably in between responsibilities and or the more important stuff in your day once it's done. Now that doesn't mean that the occasional marathon session can't be fun or that we all haven't had a game that we just had to finish and we made time for it, but if that describes the rule in your gaming life rather than the exception, you probably need to rethink your priorities. Well, that's all I have to say about the philosophical side of the gamer lifestyle. Now, let's talk about the physical. Here's the rub. Unless you're playing Wii Sports, Wii Fit, DDR, or Tony Hawk Rye... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even pretend to say that with a straight face. But yeah, aside from those, gaming is a sedentary activity, meaning you don't have to move much. Too much of that is not good for your body. Now let's pause while everybody jumps down my throat with, Oh yeah? Well, you could say the same thing about reading. And you know what? You're right. And you know what else? That'll be a great conversation to have when there's near-epidemic levels of children and teenagers who are caught reading too many books. Seriously, guys, it's time to stop pretending like that's some kind of profound argument. Until kids start showing up late for school and the excuse is, Oh, dude, I was totally finishing up the complete Dostoyevsky, you and I both know that line is full of shit. Gaming's natural inertia is compounded even more today, since so much of the rest of our lives are also sedentary. Let's be frank, the manufacturing sector is largely vanishing from the developed West and the United States in particular. More and more jobs every day are stationary and computer-based. It's not unusual for the average gamer to be sitting down for a third or more of their day at work, then sitting down even more to game. And if you're also in school, forget about it. That's just more sitting. Now, since most of us aren't stupid, I don't need to spell out that the cure for most of this is to exercise more. Now, joining a gym is probably the best course of action, obviously, but that can be expensive unless your place of business and or school has one which you can use, in which case you should probably do that. 
even just basic stuff is better than nothing. Hit a treadmill, box, bike, elliptical, free weights. Do it up. Heck, is there a beach, lake, or pool in your area? Go there. Swimming is one of the best overall exercises you can do. And that's just the fitness-specific stuff. There's a lot you can do to offset the inertia of gaming just by changing up your daily routine. Ask yourself, how many places do you go that you don't need to drive, bus, or take a taxi to in your day-to-day -day life? Maybe try walking to those, or use a bike if you've got one, or a skateboard if you know how. When you do go someplace you need to drive to, instead of parking right up front, park further back and add some walking to the errand. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Now look, that's all well and good, but let's face it, we're gamers, and gamers got a game. Plus, sometimes it's cold, it rains, it's wet, it's snowy, and sometimes you just want to dive right into a big epic title and just soak it up for a few hours. That's cool. I get that. There's a new Final Fantasy, a new God of War, a new Metroid, a new Mario, and maybe even a new Zelda coming this year alone. And when you get them, you want to take a big first bite. Hey guys, there's nothing wrong with that. But even when we are sitting down in the game, there's ways to mitigate the unwanted negative side effects. So let's talk about nutrition. The human body requires food, water, and fresh air. And if you don't get those, or you don't get them in the right amounts, the various systems can start shutting down or other adverse effects can occur. As gamers, we engage in a largely non-physical activity. And if we don't keep track of these things, it can have serious consequences. Even those of us who are already in pretty good shape would do well to monitor the way that we eat and drink and breathe while gaming in order to maximize our physical potential. Let's start with position. If you're going to be gaming for an extended period of time, try to sit in a proper chair with good back support. Consult a doctor or other expert to determine what works best for you. As frequently as you're able, pause the game, get up, walk around, maybe do a push-up or a crunch or two just to keep everything chugging. If you're able, open at least one window or find some other way to frequently imbibe fresh air. Now for the food. Nothing goes together like gaming and snacks. And guys, I'm no food Nazi. I love some chips, dips, puffs, rinds, rings, chocolate, mallow. I'm all about junk food. And in moderation, there's nothing wrong with junk food. It's just not great for you. And during a sedentary activity like gaming, it's even worse for you. So while treating yourself to a quarter pounder after a hard day's work is one thing, maybe we ought to rethink offsetting gaming's lack of exercise opportunities by snacking smarter while you're gaming. And I'm not talking about switching from hot pockets to lean pockets, okay? Here's the deal. I'm not here to talk about a diet because... <clears throat> Bob is not a licensed nutritionist. Before undergoing any significant change to your diet, consult a doctor and or other expert. I'm talking about basic stuff. Snacking while gaming equals eating while stationary. And that means it's best to avoid foods with high carbohydrates and calories and foods low in nutrition and energy. So as you've already guessed, it might be a good idea to avoid cheese, chips, puffs, candy, dessert pastry, all that kind of stuff as your game food. What's a better idea? Come on, you already know this one. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, yogurt. This ain't exactly some high-end Black Mesa shit, guys, right? You don't need Dr. House to tell you this. Plus, most of these also have the advantage of being easily prepared and made snackable. Cut up some apples, some orange slices, bananas, raisins, grapes. You get the idea. Me, I like some baby carrots. You can buy those by the bagful and they're good. Nuts tend to work out pretty well, too. Unsalted, of course. You know what's a great one? Almonds. One of the healthiest nuts out there. Very tasty, usually pretty affordable, and best of all, if you get them unshelled, they're clean and have very little natural oil and grit, so you won't be wiping food goo off the controller. Isn't that nice? I mentioned energy before, too, right? Well, that brings me back to the next part. Energy drinks are bad for you. They're crazy acidic, which is bad for your tooth enamel and stomach lining. They're designed to fuck with your internal chemistry. It's just a bad scene. High caffeine drinks are mainly made to jumpstart someone after being worn out by hard work or physical exertion. Not because level grinding gets tedious. If gaming is literally sapping your energy, it's time to take one of those breaks we just talked about. So lose the fuel while gaming, and while you're at it, cut down on the sodas and high-sugar juice drinks. Water, OJ, natural fruit juice, much better ideas for a gaming drink. Not only will being nutritionally sound in your choice of game snacks help you physically, but you'll be more alert and focused, which can only help improve your skills. That's a win-win. Okay, that covers lifestyle. I hope none of that was all that objectionable, because if it is, the rest of this is really gonna fucking sting. Because now it's time to talk about culture. Now, I'm not going about the intersection of gaming and the rest of the culture. That's a video for another time. I'm talking about the culture of gamers, or lack thereof. Now, guys, 
I'm one of you, right? We love trivia and obscure games and memorizations, knowing how and why Wonder Boy and Venture Island kept switching games back and forth. That's all good. But if that's all you know, that's not so good. Speaking only for myself as a member of the gamer community, I guess, there's nothing that sucks as much as sitting down and getting into a good conversation with a gamer who seems really sharp and knows everything about some obscure substrata of gaming, and then you mention something from the broader prop culture or some current event, and, you know, that's something that everyone should know, and then they look at you and go, Huh? I'm going to say this as plainly as possible. It may be fun, it may be impressive in certain circles, in some cases it's even useful. But if video games and the gaming ephemera are all you know, you are a boring person. And more importantly, you may be on your way to a state of self-imposed societal dysfunction that could be putting you at risk for some serious loneliness or worse. No, stop, stop, I don't stop, I don't want to fucking hear it. Familiarity with only one topic to the detriment of all others is only beneficial if you happen to be working for DARPA right now. Now, not everyone can know everything, and not everyone is cut out to be a so-called renaissance man. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, and it's not like engaging the broader culture outside of gaming is hard to do. In a moment, I'm about to scroll a list of authors, none of whom will be at all obscure. If you see a name pass and you haven't read at least one book, short story, play, whatever by them, it's time you fixed that. Start checking out some books, cut maybe a half hour or more out of your daily gaming or game news checking schedule, and do some reading. Hell, a lot of these you can probably read online. And I promise you, it's a more rewarding thing to do while you're pretending to work than hitting up Farmville for the 90th time today. Ask yourself a question. How many movies made before 1975 have you seen? Okay, here's another list. Just like the one before, none of these are hard to find or especially obscure. And while we're at it, how much do you know about history? Sports, music, art, theater? Can you cook? Can you cook well? Can you paint, play an instrument, dance, know any martial arts, speak more than one language, ever write a story, a poem, a song? Am I getting through here? You're a gamer. Great. So am I. But that doesn't mean you can't also be a sports fan, a movie buff, a reader, a music lover, anything. There's a shitload of gigs worth of space in here, and you can fill it with anything you like, and it cuts in both directions. Just think of how much richer your gaming experience will be when you're a well-rounded human being with more points of reference. Won't it be nice the next time you see a familiar musical cue or character style in a game, you'll be able to find it reminiscent of a song or a painting or a story you know, instead of just reminding you of some other game? Now, there is one angle that does outweigh familiarizing yourself with the culture of the world, and that's familiarizing yourself with the reality of the world. I'm talking about current events. Let me put this as plainly as possible. If you are living in the United States and can name more supporting characters from the Resident Evil franchise than you can members of the Senate or House of Representatives, you have a problem. If you know a higher percentage of Valve designers by name than you know members of the Supreme Court, you have a problem. If you can't tell me who these ten people are, you have a problem. This is another simple fix. There's this thing called the news. Check it out. It's almost like watching my show, except it's about stuff that actually matters. I know I'm not the only one who tends to keep a TV or a radio on in the background while surfing, gaming, or working. So if you do, tune it into some news. There's lots of choices, especially if you've got cable. And if you don't, there's even more of it available online. Look, guys, you don't have to morph into Walter Cronkite, but it would be nice if everybody understood that when they talk about the health care debate, they're not discussing which member of President Obama's party has to be the tank and which one has to be the healer. And this is going to be the tough one because it pisses me off the most. See, all those other things, you know, poor fitness, cultural myopia, I can understand that. I mean, those aren't exclusive to gamers, Lord knows. But if there's one thing that stands out about all the other problems with the gaming community right now, it's that way too fucking many of us have no idea how to act proper. And that is just fucking unacceptable. It's also the only problem in this piece that's a new thing, as in within the last decade. Once upon a time, being a gamer did not automatically make people assume you had no grasp of basic human interaction. You know why? Because if we wanted to game in any way other than on our own, we had to go interact with other humans. 
If you wanted to play with your friends, everyone would have to go to somebody or another's house, necessitating the basic skills of knowing how to act as someone's guest. We also had these great things called arcades, which were public places where you didn't just game, but also met people, hung out, maybe had lunch. It helped gaming maintain a constant and very real connection with the physical world. What happened? You know exactly what happened online multiplayer, which for all its supposed benefits has done, in my view, a massive amount of harm to the medium and the society it inhabits, not just in terms of making it somehow acceptable to release a $60 game with a single-player mode that doesn't even last the fucking weekend. No, far more problematically, online multiplayer has created a situation where, by having people play with people without actually playing with people, you've raised a generation of gamers who think nothing of treating an actual person they're playing with online with the same lack of respect they treat a computer-controlled enemy. Let's listen in on the most famous example, as Xbox Live user, who sounds like he's maybe fucking 12, trades clever verbiage with XBL mod, The Pro. Yo, The Pro, I fucked your fucking grandma so fucking hard in the fucking dumb teeth that she fucking spit out blood, motherfucker. You suck dick. Abuse your power. Console beam out. Give a fuck. You'll never see your Xbox again, piece of shit. <laughs> okay, son, I'm gonna call your mom right yeah, now. Yeah, call my mom. And there are gamers out here who are taking this kid's side. What the fuck is wrong with us? Go on Xbox Live at any given time, and you stand a good chance of experiencing racism, sexism, homophobia, and just plain vile rudeness of the type that even the worst radio shock jock wouldn't think of trying to air otherwise. The anonymity of online play is like catnip to the absolute worst instincts of humanity, and these cretins are dragging all of gaming down into the muck with them. So I've got a message out there for every fucking troll with a headset and a copy of Modern Warfare. Nothing excuses this kind of bullshit behavior. Especially being good at a goddamn FPS doesn't excuse this kind of behavior. You are not a badass because you own a copy of Call of Duty. You are not the man because you can swing around a pretend virtual gun on a kill streak. You think you're so damn hardcore? Go join the actual army, if you're such a badass gunslinging motherfucker. I bet you're in for a rude awakening if you did, kiddo. Anyway, the only solution for this is for us, for all of us, to stop standing for it. Don't do it yourself, and make it your business to shun and refuse to interact with gamers who do. If gamers wish to be regarded as a community worth taking seriously, we need to stop being a community that simply puts up with racists and gay bashers and other petulant little antisocial assholes as though you can't do anything about them. Yes, you can. You can make the virtual battlefield a lonely place for them by refusing to game with them, by logging out, or failing that by treating them with the scorn and derision they deserve. Nobody likes to hear this. I don't like saying it. And I'm sure a whole bunch of you are already pissed off and you're ready to hit me with some but but buts about political correctness or how come some people can say it but I can't say it. And I want to tell you to shut the fuck up with that right the fuck now. Being nice to people and not treating them like shit is not political correctness. It's just being polite. Not calling people awful names is not politically correct. It's common fucking courtesy. Do you even understand what some of these words mean? Yeah, I saw that one South Park about the F word too. But reclaiming language and disempowering taboo words is not what douchebag gamers are engaging in when they call people that word on live. It means you're calling them gay and meaning it as an insult, which is moronic and rotten to do on two levels at least. Do not try to bullshit me on this, kids. If you do this, you're an asshole. Knock it off. I also don't want to hear from a bunch of angry white boys who think there's some kind of massive societal injustice attached to the fact that they aren't allowed to casually toss around the N-word like black people are. Yeah, 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 double standard, whatever, uh-huh, shut the fuck up. Do you have a clue what a jackass you look like acting as though having people look at you funny for using a bigoted epithet is some kind of epic discrimination? I keep saying that I don't like doing this, and I know you don't like hearing it, but at some point we just have to accept that if we want the broader culture to meet us halfway, that kind of means you have to go the other half. 
None of this is complicated. None of it should be controversial. We as gamers could stand to live better. We as gamers could stand to improve our cultural acumen. We as gamers need to treat the world around us with the same respect we want the world to treat us. Except that Atkinson guy in Australia. Fuck that guy. There. That wasn't so bad, was it? Well now, let's all soothe our jangled nerves by watching something that we'd all like. Like, uh... Yoshi's debut in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Ah, that's more like it. <laughs>